Hey everyone, and welcome to our SBF um, DKIM and DMARC session. And today I'm going to talk about those three areas and why they're so important um, and how it really affects how you're interacting with your customers, um, how it affects your how to how for you how you're going to be super successful in making sure the emails that you're sending out is actually secure. And this session is all about using Microsoft's infrastructure, um, Office 365, and using it properly, setting up those three things. Again, SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. Making sure these three things are all set up in conjunction with your, your, um, your domain host infrastructure that collaborates with your Office 365, right? And the big thing is, is that as you start working with your customer you working emailing your customers and emailing your partners and growing your business and this is any business a startup a mid-sized company an enterprise company you have to adhere to these three security rules and take it seriously because usually what happens is spf and i'll, I'll list it here spf is usually the one thing that's regularly set up so they have some features set up and you'll start finding SPF is a very easy to set up and it's kind of pre set up and you'll, you start setting things up and you'll see a TAT's record and it'll be auto populated and you're off and going. Like if you're using GoDaddy um, or Ionos or, you know, any other uh, uh, of domain service provider that already had already has this pre SPF setup configuration that's in there. And then that's it. You know, DKIM, super important, doesn't get set up. And then DMARCs, again, super important, does not get set up. And it really lessens the, the quality of the emails that are being sent out to your customers, your partners, or anyone. And then when you start emailing some service providers that already have their DMARC set up, and it, which is one of the biggest challenges and dangers for you is, is that their DMARC will just reject the fact that you don't have SPF and DKIM set up. So to do two things with DMARC, you can either do nothing, sorry, three things, do nothing, or you can quarantine. So those emails that don't have SPF or DKIM set up will go directly into your um, junk mail. And last, you could just reject them email altogether. So you don't want this to happen to you. You want to make sure you got these three basic things set up in your infrastructure and they're super easy. I'm going to walk you through it and I'm going to talk about it in a little bit of depth. But today I am going to use Copilot. I'm, I want to use Copilot. I'm going to ask Copilot some simple questions like Copilot. Tell me what is SPF and let's see what Copilot has to say what SPF is and Copilot comes back and gives me a really interesting non, um, uh, um, not what I expected. So let's go back and let's ask Copilot again. Let's get a little bit specific because um, you could see here, I didn't, I just used a term like what is SPF, valid emails, right? And I'm just doing this on the fly. And I want to, I want to see what, perfect. Now, ultimately, this is a really good explanation. Like SPF is a, a method of email authentication that helps validate mail sent from your Microsoft 365 organization. Its primary purpose is to prevent spoofing senders um, used in business emails, compromised, ransomware, and other uh, attacks. And then it gets into details, like how you set it up and TATX records, which I'm going to show you. But but ultimately, all a simple explanation of SPS is it's just when you're sending an email, it SPF is um, validating where the email is coming from, right? It's basically saying I'm sending an email from um, Microsoft's email exchange servers or Office 365's infrastructure. And when that email comes from you to me, 
my servers will validate. Like, where did this email come from? And you'll say, it'll say in the email delivery, this is coming from Office 365, Microsoft, Microsoft servers. And then I'll go, my system will go check and validate that, yes, this email did come from Office 365, Microsoft Exchange servers. So that's in the basic what SPS is. And this link here is, gets into detail about setting up SPF, and it really starts talking about what SPF is. And I'll include it in the description below um, as just follow-up information. Now let's let's jump in the next thing, like what is DKIM? And I think this is a perfect segue to go back to Copilot and say, hey Copilot, let's start let's start another session. Okay. And what is DKIM? I'm gonna remove that section. I pasted it. And then I'm gonna hit enter. And then we'll, let's see what Copilot has to say on this topic. And this is really good. Now Copilot is starting to give us some more insight into DKIM. Now DKIM, Domain Keys Identifier Mail, is a email authentication protocol designed to verify the senders and integrity of the email message. Now in other words, DKIM uses digital si signatures to verify that the content of the email was not tampered with. Um, it's important that that content in email was never hacked, was never touched, and that is the, the power of having DKIM turned on and engaged. So whenever you send an email to me, my system is going to check, my DMARC is gonna go back and check and say, oh, where did this email come from? Did it? And you're gonna say, it came from Office 365 from SPF. And then I'm gonna say, was, I'm gonna verify those signatures. And by verifying those signatures, I'm gonna know, my system is gonna know if um, the content of the emails was touched, tampered, was hacked, right? And then if it was, which I'll get into the next subject, DMARC, what do you do when you find out? And that's the simplest thing about DKIM. And this is why DKIM is super important because you need DKIM set up and you need DKIM working because now when you are building out your marketing automation and you're using marketing automation tools, you know, the best in the world are going to be um, Marketo owned by Adobe and then Oracle's um, Eloqua, right? And these are super expensive marketing automation tool. But for us startup, small businesses, medium sized companies, you'll use a tool like Active Campaign or Infusionsoft or just any or HubSpot or any marketing automation tool that is a little bit more affordable, but requires, it's very critical that you have FPF, DKIM and DMARC set up. So let's get to the next, the next one, the next question. And that is DMARC. And I think I pretty much answered what DMARC is. And let's do that again though with Copilot. What is DMARC? And Copilot is gonna take a second and give us a great, answer you know, a domain a domain based message authentication reporting and conference um, it is an email security protocol that helps domain owners protect their domain from unauthorized use commonly known as email spoofing a better explanation as i i've been you know alluding to dmart goes and checks when you send me an email and checks to see do you have spf set up and do you have DKIM set up? Is the email coming from where you say it's coming from? Office 365, and if it doesn't, that's a fail, first fail. And was the content of that email um, tampered with by verifying your signatures? And if those things, two things are not done, DMARC is gonna say, what do you want me to do with this? You have three things. You could do nothing, and then just accept the email, and then you manually look at that email. Or you could um, quarantine that email and you could send that email to um, your, your, your junk mail and you'll, you can go in and look at the junk mail or you could just reject emails that do not have SPF and TKM set up. And it's very, very important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you um, using a tool I like to use called DMARC Made Easy. And I'm gonna show you the importance of like putting your domain in here and scanning and, and getting some insight into that. But so now that we've covered the three most important things, let's get into 
how do I solve this problem, right? Why is this a challenge? And I want to thank our sponsor. And um, our, our driver today is Enterprise Solution, um, Enterprise Software Solutions. And these are our software dudes. And today, as being a provider, right, um, ESS is the provider. That we provide you all your offer, your Microsoft Office products. So we're providing you this. You're able to get into your Office 365. Let's say you went to ESS, you'd worked with the team, you got set up, and then we got you set up with your Office 365. So I want us to start, and let's dig into this, right? I want us to start at the beginning. Um, you're going to come in, and you're going to start here. You know, you get your email, you get set up, and you need to go. To, you're going to go straight into admin, right? And then I'll just go back to where I, I was at, and then in your admin. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is basically go into settings right here, and then go down to domains, right? And now you're ready, right? So before I get into the uh, depth of domains here, um, I want to back up a little bit, right? So I also want to show you that you 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 want to purchase your domain, and and for the sake of today, um, you could be using GoDaddy, you could be using a uh, Bluehost, um, you could you you could you you be using Ionos, you can use any other tool, but Namecheap is pretty regular, so I, I use Namecheap. Cheap, I really like them. It's really easy. I recommend using them. Um, but you don't have to use them, but the, the logic applies on any platform. So you'll go into, you can just see here, I have my dashboard. So I, I went in, I went in, I purchased the domain. I got the domain. I got the domain all set up. Everything is ready to go. And the next thing I'm going to do is manage my domain. So I log in, I have my dashboard. I can go to, um, my dashboard and now I'm going to go into my domain list. I could do that. Or I could just click on the goal is to get to this button, this manage button over here. Right? So now that I'm on the manage button, I'm clicking on it and now I'm be, I'm able to look at my domain. Now to make this a little easier, I have another account where I already have all my C names and SPS records. And, and this is pretty extensive. Like this is setting it up, um, uh, across different uh, platforms. And the base is having your DKIM, records set up and I'm going to really show you this, take some time walking through this. And then, um, basically, uh, and let me, uh, basically get your DMARC set up and getting that up and running and then so forth. Right. So, and then, uh, SPF. So we're going to get into that, but I'm going to show you how Microsoft make this is really, really easy. And this is a fresh account, right? So once you're in, you want to make sure that you can click on advanced DNS and then you're going to go in over here. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is um, I showed you here. We want to make sure that it doesn't have any records, right? So I got this, this address is parked. It's like I got C name parked. Um, and once I, once I actually, you know, I can remove these two records. Actually, I'm going to remove these two records because um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to park, right? So, and this is fresh. It'll be parked. You, I, you also don't need this um, URL redirect, but I'll just leave this. I'll add that later. Now, I'm going to go back to the domain, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, the domain right there. I'm going to, you know, control copy, go back to my domain over here. I'm going to click Add Domains, right, and then I'm going to add that domain right there, and I'm going to click Use Domain. Ignore this, and voila! Now it's giving me some TXT records. So you can just here's my cheat sheet, right? So I'm getting some TXT, and look at that, you know, SPF. Right, and I'm going to need some records, but first, I need to be able to validate that, that I can connect to this environment. So what I'm going to do is click continue, right, and then grab these records. So first, I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab the TXT record. I'm going to, and you usually just click this button, copy, and then just paste. But I already have a preset, but I'll just do control. Sorry. Control V there, and then I have it already pre-selected, but you know, proper way you grab it, control, that's ready to go, and I'm done. Now, here's the value of a really, one reason why, I, again, I, I love Namecheap, because when I used a different tool in the past, I started to notice that I, I you'd have to wait an hour. 
So technically, it's like one to two hours for the populate the populate to work, and it could be a, a little frustrating, right? So as this starts to uh, populate, right? Because sometimes you'll come in here and you just kind of have to wait, and um, and it should work. Sometimes it takes about you know a couple of minutes. So now it's just verifying that that THD record is actually there, and I'm able and. That's pretty quick, right? One of the beauties of using Namecheap, because again, I remember working, waiting two hours, and that could be frustrating, right? So now let's click, click to continue and go on to the next thing. Now this one, it does take a bit, so I'm going to add the records in here, and you're going to see me start to talk about uh, this M MDX record could take a couple of minutes to actually uh, populate. So I'm going to show you how to add all these records. So let's far, start with the TXT because it seems to be a little bit easier. We're kind of used to it, so like, let's take the first record. And the cool thing is, is that I'm gonna hit the TXT, add that, and then I'm going to add, and look at that, uh, V-SPF. So what are we adding? We're adding our SPF record. So step one, solved. SPF on our list is solved, right? And you'd go in here, and these instructions will get into the details and basically tell you, you're gonna do that, what we just did really easy, and set up our SPF. Second thing, second thing we're gonna do is add some more records. We're, let's go in here and add our C name. And I'm gonna add this one. And this is just our C name, it's just connecting to the Microsoft infrastructure, and then it's auto discovery of Outlook. So it's, it's connected to their Microsoft Exchange, so Outlook is a part of the whole Microsoft Exchange infrastructure. And basically, it's this C name is just getting this domain to connect into this whole Microsoft 365 world, right? And then let's get into our M M M X record. So this is where it gets a little fun, right? I'm gonna go custom um, custom M X record, and I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to you know grab that, paste it, and then grab that, paste it. And then my priority is going to be zero, right? So I pre properly so grab it again and then paste it. And then when I'm done, save all changes. Now, by me doing this, MX record just means I literally took my whole mail server, my mail settings, and pointed it, the domain on who's gonna handle the mail setting for this as uh, you know, millions of emails, let's say like 10,000 emails on this domain you know, accomplish more with less dot X, Y, Z. And that could be dot com, dot net or anything. But, you know, I just bought a $1 domain to, 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 to showcase this logic, right? And it points it now at Microsoft. So now Microsoft has control and can see and can handle and can manage. Now this is a little tricky, right? So this is going to um, take approximately like a minute or two to do so what i'm going to do is i am going to um let's let's let that populate so let's give it about 10 minutes for it to populate and we'll pick up okay so that been about 10 minutes i gave it enough time to take those records and populate so let's go ahead and move to the next step and click continue and it should go in and validate those records that they're in there and then it looks like it did. Yep. And voila, right? We're done. So now we've officially added that domain. It's in here. Um, and what I'm going to do is let's just grab it. Right. And look at it. Right. So now I got, um, let's just do X, Y. Right. So now the domain is actively in here and I'm going to need to move to the next step and, and let's again let's take a quick look and I'll take a quick peek at my cheat sheet to kind of see um, what what's going to be next and so the next thing is we're going to need to set up DKIM right so and I'm taking you through that whole process so the setup DKIM this is where it gets a little tricky um, you're going to need to go to this security uh, uh, section right here and by clicking on that security piece it's going to take you here to Microsoft Defender. So actually, let me just click on it and open it up in a new tab so you can see what I'm talking about. 
So you can see we're here. Make sure we click on security and then boom, it'll take you right here to uh, Microsoft Defender. Now that we're in Defender, uh, I'm not close out of this one. It, we could see that it's it could be a little tricky. Like you could come in here and you know you could get a little lost and it could be a little intimidating. Super easy. I just go to policies and rules. Right, so policies and rules. I click on that. And and again, all of that is broken down into steps inside of here, right? But simplifying this, just kind of showing you how to do it real quickly, and then. Now that you're at um, policies and rules, right? Um, I kind of clicked on the wrong section. So let me just go back and we're going to go to threat policies. Right? So when we're in the threat policies uh, section, we're looking for something that says email and we see here email authentication settings. Perfect. And we're looking for DKIM and that's exactly where we're going to go, right? So let's click on this. And now we're in the correct spot, right? Now, once that domain is in here, as you see here, we can actively now go to DKIM. And I'm not gonna talk about um, trusted arc sealers. Um, this is a little bit more advanced feature where you're actually like you're sending out an email and for some odd reason, it's not able to, to, to read the SPF and DKIM. So this arc is like a stamp, it'll like stamp it that um, and seal it's tr it's trusted and and force when you send that email out. So uh, I don't. I mean, you could add this. And you could you could kind of see like I was playing around with this, but you don't have to. So um, you could just avoid arc and then focus on this again. And we're going to come back to here. Let's put it in the search. Come make our lives a little bit more easier. And then it'll come up. And what we want to do is click on it, right? And now it's going to say, create my DIM keys. So I'm going to click create, right? And then it's going to generate for me some DIM keys and voila, there you go, right? So you can see my DIM keys and I'll give you, and here's some live examples of an actual working environment where you, you can see, I set it up as a C, maybe two C names, DIM keys, and then I put in that as the host and then I put in um, this selector one as the value. So let's do that now. Let's do it live, right? But you know, I was looking at my cheat sheet here and I'm going to go in in here and I am going to um, do this a little quick, quicker. I'm just gonna spin up two records. And this is again, why I really, really like this, like um, name cheap, because it just makes it easier to set everything up. Right, and then you can see here, I set selector one, and, so, and I'm gonna add selector two. Just make sure you say selector two domain keys right there, right? I'm gonna grab that one and then put it there. And now I'm gonna grab this whole thing right there. You know, the value selector one, and you can see here, it literally has the domain, instead of a dot, it's a dash, and then done, and then underscore, and then domain key, um, for my domain, right? So I'm gonna drop that in there. And then I'm gonna grab that one. I'm gonna drop that one in there like that. Right, now I'm done. And click that and voila, that's it. I've literally created two C names, right? Let's go back to my cheat sheet, right? I created two C names and completed adding the SPF. That easy, right? And so when it's done, right, I'm going to, I can hit copy and I know I'm done. So now I'm going to enable it, click it to enable. And sometimes, you know, Microsoft could be a little, you know, a client error, like you, you might get this because again, it needs a little bit of time to populate, right? So we'll try it one more time and then We'll, we'll leave this, move to DMARC, and then come back and then re-enable it. And if it needs like you know, 10 or 15 minutes, um, we'll, we'll give it some time, I'll pause, and then we'll come back. So, so that's pretty much it. Once you click enable, and then it'll uh, give this feature, and then we'll close out of it, and you'll see it you know, ready to go, right? So let's come back. 
So let's move to the next section. And then this one is, there is no inside of here a DMARC. Like the DMARC section is you would already know, I'm doing some Google searches, right? And you would already know um, how to uh, uh, add your DMARC. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Like I went online and, um, and I'm using this tool right here. And you can see here, if I take that out, and I'm, I'm gonna just do it again over here, and I'm gonna grab this domain, I'm gonna add it in there like that, right? I'm gonna make sure it's MX lookup, make sure there's no space. I'm just gonna click that. Now it's gonna come back because um, it doesn't see DMARC, it's not published, but it sees DNS, and, and it does see some things, but um, it's still in development, you know, it's, it's still in construction mode. So once everything is up and running, I actually come in here and just kind of validate and make sure everything is, is, uh, working correctly. Um, and let me do it again. All right. So when you actually come here, you, I was pre in here previously, but you'll come in here, you'll see it's like this super beta, and then you'll come here and you'll, you can do some other cool things, which I'm not going to get into today, but just keep it simple. MX lookup. And I'm just going to click that. Right, and it's gonna come back and it's gonna just start telling me like, hey, your uh, DMARC is not published, right? So an easy tool I like to use is, is pretty much this. Um, this tool is really, really super helpful. Like it, it empowers me to um, um, get to set up. So here's another account I have, like accomplish more or less, and let's run the test, right? So, and this is easy DMARC, right? So you could see, wow, I got 10 out of 10. Like this is pretty amazing, right? So I put in, I went to easydmark.com, I set it up and then I can actually go in here and you can see here and scan it again like that, right? So if I clicked, you know, start my DMARC journey or see details, actually see details, it'll take me to the screen, right? And it's gonna tell me uh, um, some insight about like what's going on, what's wrong. And you could see, you remember we just set that up earlier um, on this one and you see it's like SPF is, is valid, DKIM is valid, and then now DMARC is valid. Now this is, this, this is affected pretty heavily by the fact that I went in and I put reject um, and I actually use quarantine or do none. So if I did none, this would come back at a six, right? So everything is pre-set up. And I would say, so let's get this DMARC set up while we're waiting for um, uh, SPF to uh, uh, populate here. So, and I'm just playing around with, you know, using easy DMARC and, I'm, and this is, you know, a typical tool you're gonna use to do lookup and kind of check your work. DMARC lookup, DKIM lookup, DMARC lookup, MDX lookup, DNS lookup. Like you're gonna really use um, mxtoolbox.com to really start validating and look at that thing. And this, these are free tools, like get here and you use it. And if you wanted to use more advanced capabilities in it, then you can go to the pricing and, and pay more money um, and get more capabilities. But pretty much, I mean, not needed, like the, these free tools are super, super helpful and get you going and give you the visibility you need to, to get up and running. If you're doing something more detailed, you actually would, would uh, leverage the capabilities of these tools, uh, more advanced features of these tools. So that covers that. Um, but let's move to the next piece. And this one's gonna be setting up DMARC, right? So to set up DMARC, you're going to first, and you can see here, I have DMARC, underscore DMARC is going to be the host name. It's gonna be a TXT record. Underscore, it's always gonna be underscore DMARC. And then this is where it gets a little tricky. Tricky. So I've done this so many times. I have it pre-populated, and I will um, I will uh, grab probably. Uh, let me see here. Um, I'll grab a simple one, right? So a simple D mark. Taking that away, it's just this. V um, um, equals D mark one. You know colon. You know, P equals none. That's it. Simple, easy, quick DMARC. And this is where I was talking about earlier of reject, right? Because this is very important. You could only do none. You could do quarantine or you could do reject. And, and you want, you're supposed to do reject. 
you're supposed to, because you want to make sure when we're talking security, right? You're using the highest proper form of security. Now, sometimes um, I usually don't do reject, right? I'll do, if I'm doing a, a, a mass cold email campaign and I bought um, in Namecheap probably like 20 domains, right? Um, and I'm, I'm taking my domains and I'm a big Microsoft person. So I take all my domains and I connect them into my Microsoft infrastructure in here. I connected all 20 of my domains, domains in here, right? So now my domains are all connected. Um, and then what I do is I want to reject these emails because I don't want, and you can see here, I'm trying to make sure I can go back and that's what I But I wanted to make sure that, um, People who's, who are emailing me have their FPS set up, have their DKIM set up. And if they're, if they're not, it's going to reject. So I won't get those emails. So usually what I'll do is this, I'll just keep a, just a simple, all right, none. So I'm going to be none. And my score will drop to a six. And that's fine, right? That's the reason why I would use none, right? Or um, I, 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 want, I, I take my security seriously. So I'm, I want a little bit more security. So I'm going to change it to quarantine, right? So that'll just say quarantine. And that will just mean that um, the emails that are coming to me are basically, let me just change this to a little bit longer one for the next, next explanation. Um, right here, so you can see here, like the emails are coming to they're gonna be quarantine, P equals quarantine, right? And it's gonna go into my junk mail, right? And then there's added features you can put on where they build a special junk mail and it'll go there and you can send them and so forth. So that's, that's how simple, a simple TXT record, I'm gonna do quarantine, so in this situation, I'm gonna do quarantine. Now, there is an added feature in here of RUA, mail to, and I'm not gonna get into depth of that. that. That's just getting into an RF equals mail to. So you could add those features. And then, um, you know, there, there's, uh, what's another one? Um, you could add in, you know, FO equals one, right? I just wanted to keep this super, super simple. So. In this use case, I'm, good, I'm just gonna do quarantine. Let's do quarantine, do mark equals one, let's do quarantine, and let's hit save. And that's it, that's it. That was so easy. We just literally set up our um, SPF, our DKIM, and our DMARC, right? And everything is set up and everything is ready to go. Now, right now, we're just waiting for this to populate. And it, it's going to take a uh, it's taking a little longer, and that's okay. This is this is this is this actually happens, right? So syncs will take um, a few minutes to as many as four days based on specific DNS. Actually, again, like I use, giving you a use case, I used another provider that literally took like two days um, versus you know this this spinning up you know pretty pretty fast. Um, so I'll click click out of this. You know, I, I, you could come out of it and then come back in, right? And then, because you could just wait because it's looking for those to validate, right? So, so I'll probably wait for an hour, but I'm gonna, I want to give you a live example of like what it looks like. So it will look like this. Like I would click it and it'll do enable like that, right? So you could see, because I have the same one, it's a .com. But boom, it'll just enable like that and you're done. And you just come out of it. Right, but it's still trying to populate, and that's okay. That's okay. But I wanted to show you the flow, the full-on flow of of what it looks like and what happens. All right, so now it's 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 done. Now because it's still trying to populate, like Microsoft is still trying to look and so forth, it's going to um, it's going to basically like scan, look, and try to give me some um, updates. Um, I do want to touch on. So we talked about this. We talked about this. We talked about uh, MX uh, Toolbox. We talked about um, Easy DMARC. Um, you can sign up for this. And I, do, I really do like this tool, but you can sign up for this and get the free version. Just kind of use the trial and play around with it and so forth. And then um, um, I don't think, it just kind of depends on your level of effort, you know, like workload or a complexity you're using, you can upgrade to this version, the plus version. Um, but this is actually pretty, pretty powerful. It just makes the whole DMARC setting up piece. So you could just avoid the step, this step of creating this record because it'll just tell you 
records in this system, like when you sign up, to put in here, and then this actually manages your DMARC. But you, I'm giving you a clear example of you don't need these tools for free. You can get a 10, right? And I got this is because I went in here, and you're going to see I changed this to reject, um, uh, to, to reject, right? And then that, that got me um, a high score, you know, a 10 out of the 10, which is perfect. Um, one, I want to add some more features. I want to I want to give you some more spamminess. Now, now this is mailtester.com, mail-tester.com. This is really, really powerful tool. Um, I like this tool because once everything is up and running, the one thing you want to do is like click here and go here, click here, copy, and then go into your email. So I'm pointing down and you can't see it, but I have my Microsoft Outlook. And basically on your email, what you want to do is email yourself and in it, um, in the two, you send an email here and then wait one minute, right? So go into your, so you basically like this. You'll go in here and you go into your Outlook right there and then pull up your Outlook and then put that in the email box in the send to box. And then you can just put like test in the subject line and then test in the body of the email and then click send. After you click send, you want to wait, just wait one minute. Right after one minute, you'll click this, then check your score, and then you'll get, and I sent it to my email, so you'll, you'll get like, uh, oh wow, like I'm able to check you know, my score and see, um, checking the spamminess of your email. So it's very important, it's always good to do this every three months, like every three months, come in here and check. Um, if you are do if you are doing like me, a lot of cold emails where I, I will send 50,000 emails a day, um, I'm going to be checking every month, right? And, and I'm going to be checking, e you know, multiple emails. So I have three emails per domain. So I'll check one or two out of those three emails, um, that's sending out and, you know, typical cold email campaign you send on one email, you send anywhere from 30 to 50 emails a day. Right. And that's why you have so many domains, but I wanted to, again, share, use mail testers really cool because you want to start getting these 10 out of the 10 scores. That's what you're looking for. Like I, if I can get these 10 out of 10 scores, I've completed the security part of my, of my whole email campaign. Um, my whole email security, right? So when I kick off my email campaigns, I'm going to be super successful. Um, and this gives you kind of an idea. So, you know, I'm not done. I might actually have to come in here and set it up. Like these two C name records is for, I'm a big active campaign user, right? So active campaign is going to give me the same things like these two C name records. So I'll go in here. It's the same C name records. So you just kind of see like how I'm going to grab um, that and um right and just put it in there like that because and and to make this so easy for me um you know when I'm, i i need to make sure like my my coaching software so i'm a big um kajabi user so same thing like kajabi has some c names items that i need to add and I need to, sorry, it's on a record. So it needs to say C record. That's why it's failing, right? So just that happens sometimes. So, um, you know, but for my active campaign, right? It's going to tell me, hey, we need to validate uh, and connect to your Namecheap. And, and basically, they gave, they'll give me these pretty two standard um, C, C name records. So I'm just, you know, just showing you the it's it's super important that you have this foundation set up correctly because when you don't have the foundation and you set this up and your fpf and your and your uh, dkim is not set up it starts you start having some issues because now you're emailing and the reason why is right these two records right is because when i'm using my email marketing automation tool and i'm emailing my existing customers right my customers need to make sure what if my customers already have their dmark set up and it's set to reject right not quarantine like that's set to reject so i'm emailing my existing customers and boom it doesn't even land in their inbox it gets rejected and i won't know why it's getting rejected and it's because i don't i haven't set up a trusted secure infrastructure and now I'm like, oh man. So 
I have to go back and fix my foundation, making sure the three things that we set up, was, which was so easy, F, SBF record, um, our, uh, our, our, our um, DKIM, and then our DMARC, that easy set those three items up and it's running. So now when I'm connected to my email automation tool, it automatically scans and looks at and sees this is actually working. And that and that's just my email automation tool. So I have other tools like this right here is my, um, so I have a C, another CMR record called instruction. And this is another tool that is similar to my email automation, but this one is specifically for my uh, cold emails. So my cold email, functions like an email automation tool, but it does, it, it sends cold emails to um, a, a large amount of people, right? So without um, you having to spend uh, a, a lot. So when you're um, using uh, email automation tool, you're basically paying for each, uh, um, the, each contact or each person, right? So you're paying for a thousand or 5,000 or 10,000, right? Well, my email automation tool, I, I could send 10,000 emails a day, right? So I'll have you know the capability to email 100,000 people over a whole month, or I can email 250,000, my package, I can email 250,000 people over a whole month. So I could just keep sending a mass cold emails out to list. And, it, and I'm saying that because it brings back to the foundation. It's super important that I'm, able, I'm getting these three uh, green check boxes because those service providers love to work with a very secure email infrastructure and it just, just makes life easier for everyone. everyone. Um, and it, it just makes your relationship and so forth with them um, really good. So anyway, we covered, again, just wanted to wrap up. We covered a lot. We covered SBF, we covered DCAM, we covered DMARC, we covered how to access and set up um, inside of uh, Microsoft Office, which is tricky. Um, and I will say that, oh, and oh, it actually went through. So this is, we gave it about, you know, a couple of minutes, it came through security, look at that. Okay, and then we're done, right? And you get that, you close, and we're done, right? And before we close, let's, let's do a dry run to see if this is going to pick it up. Now, now the score is gonna come back at maybe a five, right? Um, but we'll see. Uh, it takes us again. It takes some time for this thing to populate, and I'm hoping for a six. Ah, we got a six. Great job, right? So I got. It. See, it's quarantine, green, green, and then that is um, actually uh, yellow, right? And if I go in here, um, it's going to give me some some insight into if I scan now, right? And it'll give me a six and it'll kind of give me some warnings like, hey, you know, this is telling me like, there's a problem with the quarantine. You should set it to reject. You've got a higher score, right? Um, and then your DMARC is missing a rule of uh, uh, tag, right? So not a big deal. This this doesn't, if even without this, you still get a 10 score. So, um, so that just gives you, and a medium is good. This is good. This is not bad. You even get a six if I change this to none, right? So, or maybe sometimes it'll drop to a five. Right. So, so this is really, really good. Um, and then before we go, let's, let's, let's test some of this logic. Like let's, let's throw in some big boys in here. Microsoft. Let's look at Microsoft. Let's see what theirs looks like. Ah, interesting. Microsoft came back at a six. Let's do that again. Oh, sorry. I think I did that wrong. Let's scan that again. Yeah, sorry, we did Montfagé. Um, And look at that, perfect. Microsoft came back at a 10, right? Look at that, reject, right? Let's do, let's do some other big names, Yahoo. All right, let's see what Yahoo comes back. Interesting, somebody's slipped. There's something going wrong with, I mean, the two most important things, SPF and DKIM are not, DKIM is not even set. That's a fail, right? Um, SPF, is there that's a little odd something's going on there um let's do facebook i'm just randomly choosing to see and look at that facebook came out look wow that's a little interesting something's going on with their dcam look they said there's the reject perfect green that's nine that's a great score 
right? So anyway, wanted to do this, come back to this video. You're going to find yourself, um, and I find myself doing this, trying to find the policies and rules and then going to threat policies and then email, like getting here is a little tricky. So come back to this video. Um, so you in the beginning, you could find this area and just kind of get in here and do what you need to do. Um, that covers it for today. Thank you all so much for this great session um, and look for, look, look forward to seeing you in some future videos. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.